I want to introduce somebody that everybody knows, everybody loves. He's an amazing fighter, an amazing man now. And with that said, I don't, all I have to say is Evander Holyfield's here. Evander. So I want to celebrate Evander Holyfield, who is truly one of the greatest. Evander, real deal, Holyfield. I think what a lot of people don't know is that the 1984 Olympics, you weren't a heavyweight. And you fought at uh, 78 kilograms, which is uh, 171 pounds. Did you ever think of yourself, champ, as a heavyweight? Did you think of yourself as a smaller weight fighter? Did you think that you could be world heavyweight champion? Well, yes. Uh, you know, you know I, I started boxing at the age of eight, and I weighed six or five pounds. And a coach told me I was going to be the heavyweight champion like this. And, you know, I, well, he said I could. And I, I told him, I said, well, I got to ask my mom. <laughs> and he said, what you mean? You got to ask your mom. And I said, if I don't ask my mom, I can't even try like this. And he, and he looked and said, you got a good mom. And so I went home and asked my mom. And I said, mom. This man said I could be, I could be like Bob Lovely. And of course, I'm the youngest, I'm the youngest at nine. So if I put you know, believe you could you could, they say I can. I said, the only thing I can do is give my all. And that's how I started. I started at eight years old. As you look at your great career, I'm gonna tell you my favorite fight. I know everyone in this room has a favorite of Emmer Holyfield fights. What is your favorite Evander Holyfield fight? Pro or amateur, what stands out to you is where you felt this, everything came together for you? Well, uh, this guy named Ricky Womack, he from Detroit, Michigan. He was, you know, he, he beat the Cuban, he beat the Russians, and, and uh, but I'm the one that always beat him. And so, uh, of course, I, I beat him then all of a sudden, I, I won a silver medal in the Panamurga game. And he come out in the period of Panamurga. He, he didn't go to the Panamurga game because I went. I was silver medal. So, but I didn't ever want to go to a communist country again because I, I went to Cuba. And, and it, was, it was so bad. And I was like, oh. So, they were, they had another, we had another time to go to Russia. So I didn't want to go to Russia, so I let Womack go to Russia. And he beat everybody. And they came back and told me I had to go back to Georgia to start back. And when you know, when you when you usually become number one, you just stay and you don't have to fight all of these guys. Well, I had to go back, and, uh, and going back, I knocked out everybody in, in, in the state. Then I went to the region, I knocked everybody out. I went to the national, I knocked everybody out. So, end up number one again, and had to fight Womack, and I beat him twice. And that's how I made the Olympic team. So my favorite fight of yours is the George Foreman fight in Atlantic City. And over COVID, like a lot of you probably in this room, we had some downtime and I spent most of that downtime. My gym had been closed. I didn't know what to do with myself and I couldn't travel. So I just watched a lot of boxing, a lot of MMA. Watching live uh, in that fight in Atlantic City against George Foreman, I remember the power and the size differential. As I watched it now, and through my adult eyes, wasn't that competitive of a fight, and no disrespect to George Foreman, but you absolutely dominated that fight. Did you have concerns knowing that he was maybe the biggest puncher ever, even coming back in his 40s? He was so much bigger than you physically. Did you were able to negate that power? Because you basically won every round in that fight. Well, you know, you know, I, I was, you know, I was a kid that day. They always telling me what I could do. All the time, being the youngest and I, somehow they kept telling me, 
Now, they, they get mad. They, you know, my mama had this thing is that don't quit. Give your very best. Don't you let no tears fall out your eyes. You know, so the whole big thing is that people looking at emotion, how can they get you upset? How can they, my mom, my mom would sit me in the mirror and say, this is the slope when, when you're not for sure that everything went your way, but you have this look. Don't, don't let nobody break you down to cry. <laughs> I just and uh, and so that's what I, I really did and I, my mama says it's up to you to let somebody outwork you and so you know it's not like every day I I'm not getting up doing my running I'm gonna do my running first and I'm gonna do my push-ups and I'm gonna do my sit-ups and stuff like that I'm gonna do everything that I know I can be the very best but life is about not quitting. If you don't quit, if you just have in your mind, I'm not going to quit, and you just give your all, and it, and it, it worked out for me. So I know everybody in this room wants me to ask you about Mike Tyson. Okay. So I want to ask you about the first Mike Tyson fight. So I remember uh, I heard a boxing commentator say after that fight, after you knocked out Mike Tyson, in boxing, the strong beat the weak, and the smart beat the strong. And what that commentator was saying is that you outsmarted Mike Tyson. You obviously had huge power, you knocked him out, but you showed your intelligence. Do you recall that first Tyson fight that way? So you were a smarter fighter, the higher ring IQ in that fight? Well, actually, um, you know, I was, I was the guy that, it didn't make no difference who you are. You, you got a chance to win and I got a chance. Who, it's just, What's gonna happen when we both get hit? Now, now, I got hit all the time. I, I didn't have great defense, but just cause you can hit me, I know I can hit you. Ain't no way in the world you can hit me, I can't hit you back now. Now, the whole big thing is that I, I hustle people, but Tice was the only person that I know that, that he's a big puncher. He's a big puncher. And I go, and you know, with me personally, because Tyson and I, we were both on the losing squad trying to make the Olympic team. Now, that's how I got to know Tyson. And so, you know, and, and, and of course, when Tyson and I sparred one time, and people said, man, you gonna go in there with this guy who knocked somebody out every day? I said, well, you know, he, he the one that did. I said, man, you got to understand, he ain't over 17 years old. I said, yeah, I got to realize I'm a grown man. I'm 21 years old. I ain't going to let no 17 year old guy, I don't care who he is. And everybody go, man, that's my, I said, so what difference does that make? I'm a grown man. There ain't no way in the world I'm going to let some kid beat me up. I said, nah, like this. Did nobody want to, I went in there. I hit him three times, I hurt him, and they, and they stopped, they stopped, they stopped it then, and all that, and, and then a lot of people were saying, man, did you see what he been and did to him? I said, then nobody said that about it, so I ain't worried about it. So you know, with me personally, I'm a boxer, but you know, I can get, if a, a guy kept me a good shot, okay, he got me a good shot, but I'm not quitting. Life was just not quit. And and that's how I came up with to, to be the very best. You just can't just can't quit. Just can't quit. You give your all. And giving your all that means sometimes it would be because because people kinda of thought that it was kinda of foolish for me to say, I rather die than lose. If you say that to people, people they, people people tend to get skeleton you just cause you said something like that. I'm been you know, you know. You know I'm going to die and lose. I said, you know, if I have to die, then I die. Then I won't know I die. But, <laughs> but I'm not going to quit. I'm, I'm going to give everything. And, and, and because I said that, you know, anytime things got real bad and stuff, I said, you know, I said, you know sometimes, you know, just holding your breath and, and make it to the last 10 seconds and you came out with a win. Wow. 
I would not close you quitting, but I did. And so these are the things that these are the things that that helped me to realize that you know sometimes you can make it bigger than yourself by thinking about you thinking about how good you do, instead of just asking your coach, what's what's happening? You know, so my coach used to say, you know, my coach used to say, you know, you, you ain't asking nothing. I thought you were supposed to just tell me. You know, I ain't, I ain't never, I ain't never had to ask no coach, right? And the coach tell me, do you want me to stop the, 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 the want me to stop the thing? Okay, then you better do something then. And so, you know, in general, so if it's, it's the coaches that kind of inspire you, say, you know, what are you doing? I'm just, you know, I've had some coaches just, just, just went off on me. And I just said, you know, the point of the matter, you can't get mad with them. Because they want you to do better. And so the whole big thing in life is about being better. They only want you to do better. And so, you know, I, I just had to get over these things and, and be better, you know, because when they own you, and they laughing, you know, you whooping the daylights at the guy. So, you know, um, so these are the things that, you know, I, you, you tend to learn. Yes, sir. Go yeah. ahead, please. piggyback on that just for a moment. Uh, and he and Mike Tyson doing this exhibition fight. And in particular, everybody did not go, and he did not go the USA boxing route, for example. Uh, a lot of people think that that is the only route um, no, no disrespect to USA Boxing, but he's gone another route. He's taken advantage of social media, right? And he's gathered all these people around him. He's making millions of dollars. A lot of people are envious of that in the boxing community. What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, he definitely is showing that you can make money and it made more money than a lot of fighters. And, uh, me personally, I just I truly believe that we should find out what did he do. Because <laughs> he made more he made more money than I'm telling you, you know, just you mean him, you gon you gon box and box anybody you want to box and make that kind of money. I'm like, you know, I'm like I'm like, I ain't never seen nobody make that much money. That that really not in boxing. <laughs> I was, I was putting, and, and, and he getting paid more to fight somebody who, who believed they could beat him, and he the only one that really trained him. Like I said, you know, you ask him, but it, it's whatever, whatever those rules are to allow him to make that, make that kind of money. You know, and it, it's. Kind of make everybody else, you know, what well, you need to find out what he did and try to get in there with him. Because <laughs> for you to make that money and, and 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 don't have to don't have to fight you you don't have to fight nobody who's better than you. In other words, you know, if, if I can choose my fight, I'm gonna win. <laughs> Why shouldn't I? If I choose my fight. But you know, I'm thinking, but if, if that's a lead that that way, then it, he, I'm talking about that. Why would we be mad with him if he's showing you here's the way? Now, if these rules are different from these rules. Then okay, then okay. If you now this is this is this is the where that you you have to do the, these rules. These are these rules. Okay, then it, these rules. Okay, then it, now you find out what side you want to fight. Now, if this guy <coughs> on this side is making more money than the people on this side, then who fault is it? Now, why we would be mad with this guy here? I'm telling you, he, he got all his fans coming in, they watching, and, and it's obvious they must be paying more money because he get paid more. I like that because all this following. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, you know, I didn't. With me personally, I didn't. Me personally, I didn't. I didn't know that could be an advantage, because I would like saying to myself, you know, 
he he find nobody. He ain't find nobody. But he, if he he making more money than me, find nobody. Then, well, then why not I find somebody who's nobody? And I, you know, I mean, this is just the way it is. Champ, we so appreciate your time. I have two more questions. For you. Okay. Of course, you know, the statute of the fighters is quite different than what it used to be. I, you know, I, you know, when you look at uh, Boosie, now, you know, I just like Boosie. I, I really do like Boosie. And, and I like Boosie because when I went, when I went to Russia, he seen me and he said, Oldfield. And I said, yeah, he said, he said, same thing that you done, I'm gonna do. He said, I'm gonna be the undisputed cruiserweight champion, then I'm gonna be the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. <laughs> and I go, you know, man, I reach and shake his hand, both bow, I hope that you do. Cause this is the first person ever who said, I want to do what you did. Well, I was the first undisputed cruiserweight champion, and I was the first heavyweight champion. And so this guy telling me he gonna do it, and he did it. And I'm like, wow, you know, I'm telling you know, so, 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 this had a lot to do with the skills. Very skillful, knowing how to fight inside, knowing how to fight outside, and and know how to outwork. Somebody.